I have discovered the secret of water perpetual motion. In this video, I will tell about one kind of perpetual motion machine that was a failure. You can learn a lot from this failure. Here we have a wheel that rotates with weights pushing down on this side and floats pushing up on this side. The floats are bladders, but they're inflated by having direct weights pull them down. They do not use an air compressor. Here is a hose that brings in fresh air to the center hub, and the air then goes to each float through the arms. The action of the weight dropping and extending the bladder sucks air into the arm and down into the bladder. On this side, the floats are collapsed. The old air is simply vented out into the water as the weight collapses and gravity pulls them downward. Here, the bladder is extended in eight pounds of buoyancy force pulling up on this side. So it would rotate. Here is some of the math behind the wheel. Atmosp one atmospheric pressure, or 14.7 pounds per square inch, comes down the hose. Resisting the fall of the weight is 19 pounds per square inch of water at 10 feet. This is the air bladder folded up, just beginning to fall. This is the air bladder fully extended, 8 inches long, 6 inches in diameter. That's one gallon of air, which produces 8 pounds of buoyancy force. A lid with 6 inches in diameter is 28 square inches. That is multiplied by the difference between the 14.7 pounds per square inch and the 19 pounds per square inch, which is 4.3 pounds per square inch, equals 120.4 inch pounds. Then that is multiplied times the length of the drop. That's 8 times 120.4 equals 963.2 inch pounds. That equals 80 foot pounds, or in other words, this weight has to weigh 80 pounds to drop and force the water out of the way. Now, one gallon of air equals eight pounds of buoyancy force. So it takes 80 pounds to drop the weight, but you're only getting eight pounds of buoyancy force to rotate upwards. When you see a, a big tank of water like this, uh, there's sort of an illusion of, uh, of the water gently parting, gently spreading out in front of the, the weight dropping. This illustration helps you understand the concept of water pressure and why you need 80 pounds of weight to move the bladder downward. You have to understand that water is not a compressible fluid. I repeat, water is not a compressible fluid. When you move that bladder down, that's one gallon of water that has to be pushed all the way up. Some people are under the illusion that it's different in a tank of water. You say the water will gently get out of the way. It doesn't work that way. When the bladder is here and that bladder pops out, you're going to have to move all that water, one gallon of water, all the way up. There's one gallon of water here that has to be moved. Where is the one gallon of water to go? The only way, the only place it's going to go is up. It has to push all these layers of water ahead of it. Now, there isn't like a little bump here because when it gets to the top, the water spreads out. But before that, there is an effect, a little bump moving through the water, a little shock wave. And it has to push the weight of all that water ahead of it. There, however, there are problems with this wheel in reality. First of all, is here in this area that the float is retracted or compressed only when it reaches about the 45 degree angle. So it crosses the line and it continues to be buoyant. So that will retard, that will slow down the, the wheel. It's an inefficiency, but this by itself would not prevent the wheel from working. The float in this position is just before it would collapse to this to look like this. When it reaches the 45 degree angle, it will collapse. Uh, this, uh, this is just before it collapses. Over here, on this side, you have a problem. The float has to wait till about the 45 degree angle before it'll, it'll pop out. The weight is pushing down with 80 pounds of force, but there is no buoyancy force at all as of yet. It, the, the bladder has not popped out yet. So this is purely 80 pounds of force that has to be driven up. On the other side of the arm, the 8 pounds of uh, the buoyancy force is resisting it backwards. So you have to subtract the 8 pounds of buoyancy force out of the 80-pound uh, weight, which means it's only a 72-pound weight driving down 
the net effect is that you have eight pounds here that you're trying to rotate up, but there's nothing rotating it up. There's no force rotating that eight pounds upward. That's a very serious problem. You have to wait till the arm reaches about the 45 degree angle before the weight begins to pull the float out. When the arm is straight down, this is zero gravity force. It can't Gravity is going straight down, so it can't do anything to pull out the float. Here, but here, at this point, you have full water pressure. The water pressure is at its maximum at this level, so it has to wait until it's about half the gravity force. It's only half because gravity is going straight down, but the weight is at an off angle to the full gravity force going straight down. So it only begins to pull out the float or the, the air bladder. It's at this point when the arm is horizontal and the weight is being pulled down by the full gravity force at this point. Some people might say, can't this, be, this problem be overcome? It's only, one only needs to lift eight pounds. Can't it get some help from these three bladders? Each bladder has eight pounds of buoyancy force. That's a total of 24 pounds of buoyancy force. Can't some of that buoyancy force go to help lift this eight pounds of weight here. And that would work if these arms were truly balanced. But they're not balanced. That's the real problem of this wheel. I will explain why these arms are not balanced. Here is an arm like one from the wheel. Now, in this example, the, both the air bladders are closed and the arm is in a balanced state. The weights are the same distance from the pivot. This makes for a balanced arm. Now, this is an example of an arm that's not balanced, but it's the good kind of unbalanced. It's the good kind because the weights are still at the same distance from the pivot. The float is extended uh, and will can drive the arm up. Uh, this would work if the, uh, the air bladder or the float was on top and the weight remained here, or if it's on the bottom. The problem is, is how do you, you uh, extend the air bladder down. Well, you can't. This is just a theoretical example. The important point, though, is to see where the weights are. The weights are the dominant feature because the, each weight is 80 pounds, whereas the float only provides 8 pounds of uh, buoyancy force. This is a contrasting with reality of the wheel where the float is extended, the air bladder is extended, but the weight is at the bottom. Now, this, this arm is unbalanced, but it's the bad kind of unbalanced. It's bad because the weights are now at different distances from the pivot a balanced configuration. Now what that means is two things. First of all, it takes very little energy to rotate a balanced arm. The second thing is, is that when you do rotate it, it will stop naturally wherever you stop it. That is, it will stop moving when you stop applying force and it will stay wherever you left it in any position. Therefore, if you moved it to here, and stopped it would stay in that position if it's a balanced arm. Now we have here, we have a situation where the float is extended as you trying to get the arm to rotate naturally upward. There are two problems with this uh, arm in this configuration. It's no longer balanced. Now, when it's no longer balanced, this, this is the position it will assume naturally, this configuration. This is the center line, and this will be slightly off the center line. There are two big differences between this and a balanced arm. The first one is, is that it takes a lot of energy to move it, to press down on it. It takes a lot of energy to get it to move because it's no longer balanced. The second problem is that it will not stay in, in any position you leave it in. If you rotate it to this position, say, it will not stay in that position. Instead, it'll, as soon as you stop applying force, it will fall back to this position. It will always fall back to this position as long as it's on this side of this center line. It will always fall back here. What that means is that you have to continuously apply force to it to get it to go to the top of something. You have to constantly apply force. How much force you have to apply is how much it's off the center line. It's not bad because of the, uh, the air bladder by itself. The air bladder is not necessarily a bad thing. What is bad is that the weight is now one foot off the arm, that's what makes this bad, because the two 80-pound weights are now off-center of each other. You see, what makes this configuration bad 
is that the weight is one foot off the arm. It doesn't have anything directly to do with the air bladder. This could be just an ordinary stick. And if the weight of the stick was counterbalanced over here, this would still be bad uh, configuration. It would be balanced. In a configuration like this, this is the normal position that it would come to a rest at. Like you have to apply force, you see, to get this, a lot of force to get this thing to rotate now. How much force depends on the percentage, percentage it is off the center line. If it's, in the case of this, if, it's, if this is four feet and this was one foot, this would be about 13% off the center line, and that would translate into about 10 pounds of force. You see, you have to apply 10 pounds of force, extra force, to get this to rotate. It would take 10 pounds of force applied here, or 10 pounds of more, uh, a total of 10 pounds of buoyancy force to pull it up. Well, you only have eight pounds of buoyancy force. It will never rotate by itself. It does not have enough buoyancy force. You have to either add weight here, or to get it to rotate down, or you need to add buoyancy force here to get it to rotate up. Well, there's no way to add weight or buoyancy force. This is a buoyancy force is fixed at eight pounds. There is no way of getting the increase in either weight or buoyancy force, so it will not work. The fact that these arms are not balanced is the real reason and the ultimate reason that this wheel will fail as a perpetual motion machine.